on everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Rich. If you clicked on this video, chances are you're probably seeing a huge wave of Ugreen NAS videos on YouTube lately. They just entered into the game, going up against big manufacturers like QNAP or Synology. Big thanks for Ugreen for sending over the DX4800 Plus over. This is a sponsored video, but I wanna make it clear from the start that these are all my honest thoughts, my reviews on them, and that I have full control over what I wanna say. But fortunately enough for them, there wasn't that much bad to begin with, if at all. They're coming in really strong in the NAS game sector here, because like many of us before here, tech nerds uh, we thought that ugreen was just a company making charging supplies for devices but they're more than that and it caught me by surprise so i actually believe in a lot of ways they're not really doing anything wrong here by sending to a bunch of content creators it's actually kind of a risk for them since they're asking someone like me for my thoughts as they're sure they have a pretty good product here and i'm not scared to tell you how it is so let's get right into it First off, if you're not familiar with what a NAS is, I'm just gonna give you the rundown real quick. It's basically like a smart external hard drive that connects to your home Wi-Fi or network. It's this big box right here. Think of it as like your own Google Cloud. This one is living in my parents' house. You can use it to store all your files, videos, documents, and access them anywhere from your phone, tablet, computer, anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. It's just a Google Drive at home, you know? It'll automatically back up everything for you. And unlike subscription cloud services like Google Drive, Dropbox, and all that, which the costs uh, really adds up over time, all you gotta do with the NAS is just pay the full upfront cost of this thing, buy the hard drive bays, and that's it. Get full control, no monthly fees. Just because pay for Wi-Fi or something, right? Electricity. So what's my use case for the NAS? Uh, well, I'm a part-time content creator here. I also love documenting a lot of my life, my family, my friends, making vlogs, making movies. I have a bunch of photos and other documents I need to store. I wanna have them all remotely backed up somewhere. Having that all in one place just makes more sense to me. And I think the DX4800 Plus hits a sweet spot in the middle ground of, you know, a personal at-home NAS with the capabilities of something even greater. I mean, just look at the design. I've gotta say, this is one of the better looking NAS units out there. The sleek gunmetal gray finish and aluminum body gives it a premium, minimal look. Nothing about it feels cheap. The only small concern is that the finish might scratch easily. As you can see right here, not a huge problem, but realistically, most NAS units just sit in one spot, so it's not a big deal. Up front, the DXP4800 Plus gives you four drive bays with tool-free lockable sleds, a power LED indicator for land and drive activity, a couple of USB-A and USB-C ports, and even an SD card slot. So if you're like a filmmaker or something like that, you can take your SD card slot, put it in, directly into it, which is pretty cool. On the back, you have a solid range of ports, like a 10 gigabit LAN port, a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, more USB ports, an HDMI out, which I'll we'll talk about, a power jack and a reset button. There's also this magnetic mesh dust filter covering the cooling fan featuring a clean U green branding. It's easy to clean and remove whenever you need it. Honestly, many of us might be running with a 2.5 gigabit or my area doesn't support 10 gigabit. Plus it's pretty crazy and overkill for me, which I'll tell you why a little bit later. But under the hood, the U green DXP4800 plus runs on the 12th gen Intel Pentium Gold CPU, comes with eight gigs of DDR5 RAM, you can expand it up to 64. It also includes two M.2 SSD slots. It's also worth noting that specifically with the Ugreen NAS, they offer a wide compatibility of different hard drives and third-party SSDs. I'll leave a link down below for you to check it out. But pretty much most NAS hard drives from big names like Western Digital, Seagate, Toshiba will work perfectly on here. They're not gatekeeping anything, feature locking, or even making their own proprietary drives, uh, unlike some other manufacturers out there right now, which I really appreciate from Ugreen. But yeah, one standout feature for me is the HDMI 8K output on here. It essentially turns a NAS into a hybrid media center and that's not super common for some NAS devices out there. And honestly, it's because most people just want their NAS to be a NAS, not a media center too. Uh, usually hybrids try to do both and they end up being mediocre at best. But in this case, it actually holds it really well. If you want a quick way to play media files stored on the NAS, it's surprisingly capable. So if any of you guys have Plex Media or Jellyfin to manage and stream your personal media library. The built-in HDMI port lets you connect the NAS directly to your TV, delivering instant high quality playback. Now let's talk about the Ugreen NAS on here, which is where you'd be spending most of your time with it. The home screen is pretty straightforward. Honestly, the home screen wallpaper looks like a copycat version of Windows 11 by default. It's like a little bit dark night mode or something, I don't know. But all the apps are laid out here in which you can open up your photos and videos. On my Windows PC, I have this connected as a network location so I can synonymously drop my video footage files directly to this. We have all these drive temperatures that show you how hot, how cool they're running in, in Celsius. You can see your storage array, all of your hard drives nicely laid out in this Ugreen app. It'll also show you the CPU and RAM usage for you tech nerds out there. Right now, I set all my hard drives to RAID 5 configuration, which means it's using three discs in total, which is around uh, roughly 10 terabytes. 
and it's gonna use the last hard drive as like a backup in case of a failure. RAID 5 requires three disks minimum, so I think this is perfect since there's four here. If you guys are confused about what this means, just search it up, just type in what does RAID mean and HDD or hard drive. It's pretty easy to learn, it's just useful for backing up hard drives. You know, hard drives tend to fail over time because they are mechanical moving parts, so having them spin 24 seven is just subject to, you know, possible damage, who knows? You can also sync this through your Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive straight to the NAS, which will automate everything. So essentially think of this as shoving in a whole 16 terabytes into my Google Drive, which is pretty crazy. I basically just boosted it up. There's also a handful of AI powered features on here that can be downloaded and turned on via your own discretion, like people recognition, text recognition, you know, simply by typing key phrases like cat or places, it'll pick up roughly what it thinks you're talking about. And most importantly, all this is done locally in-house through your NAS, none of this is being sent over to Ugreen servers or anyone for that matter. And yes, like I said, you can turn them off at any time. They're all stored locally in here. Yeah, so I did talk about how the RAM was upgradable on it. It supports up to 64 gigs in total. Honestly, I'm gonna do that a little bit later. You can use DDR5 sticks running at 4800 megahertz, and this can significantly boost performance, especially when you're running multiple applications or the NAS is being accessed by several users at once. With more RAM, the system can cache more data, leading to faster access times and overall a smoother performance. I think it's definitely worth it. I'm not gonna put it in right now because I don't really need to. I'm also not gonna be running any extreme tests on this video. No 100 plus gigabyte files or testing out crazy low transfer speeds across multiple network setups. For context, I'm on a 300 megabit internet connection plan. That's pretty modest and definitely not the fastest tier. It's like the starting Verizon plan as you can see here, but that said, it's more than enough for my typical workflow. I'm someone who works with short, fast paced footage. I go quick, I usually transfer around five to around 50 gigabytes of a video file at a time. For example, here's a 16 gigabyte video clip from a local New Year event where I perform. Some of you guys might already know I'm a break dancer for many years, a very experienced and professional one, if I may say. Uploading that file to Google Drive took around nine minutes since it's going through external servers, but transferring that same file directly to the Ugreen NAS cut that down by uh, two thirds and only took around three minutes. I mean, you can go from nine to three, that's crazy. And I'm sure with faster internet or upgraded RAM, the transfer speeds could improve even more, but if you're looking for a deep dive performance benchmarks with massive files and high-end setups, there's plenty of other creators covering that. My goal here is to show how the NAS fits into my setup and my everyday workflow. Just the average common person. One of my other favorite features and the most practical one I found was the ability to share files directly from the NAS through a generated link. It's super convenient whether I'm sending footage to friends, family, or an editor. They can just click the link and download the file straight from the NAS. For instance, I recently filmed around 30 gigabytes of 4K video clips of my friends break dancing, hanging out. Instead of cluttering my phone or uploading that to Google Drive, I put all that into here, sent the links to my friend. They could watch, edit, download straight from here, do whatever they want with it. And another standout feature from the DXP4800 Plus or just uh, any NAS in general that really came in clutch was when I was filming my last car maintenance video on my Honda, which you should definitely check out uh, right after this, my SD card slot filled up mid shoot, the whole 128 gigs. I wasn't near any computer to uh, you know take the files off. So I was able to upload the files straight from my camera to the phone and upload that directly onto the NAS in the middle of like a Walmart parking lot using my cell phone cellular. Once that was done uploading, which took around 20 minutes, I cleared the SD card, got back into filming, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Felt kind of cool, not gonna lie. Like having my own personal cloud drive with a lot of space felt so refreshing, so alleviating. As long as I had some type of internet connection, Wi-Fi, cellular, and I'm not stranded in you know, the bare deserts of Tahiti. Tahiti! The last couple of housekeeping things is Ugreen supplies a two year warranty on the NAS for any problems. They have two international authorized certifications. If you're worried that this comes from China, well, every other NAS does too, then chances are you shouldn't get a NAS in the first place. So for me, this NAS, it's, it's a game changer. It's cool, it's solid, very personal. It does give me a peace of mind and more creative flexibility over other NASs I researched. Prime Day is coming up real soon if you're watching it before it happens. You know, click the link down in the description to get 20% off. Make sure to purchase them through my links as I get affiliate kickback back and that'll help your boy out a lot. That's all I got for today's video. I'm gonna go plug this back in straight upstairs so I can take the footage from this and put it on here. If you got any other questions, any concerns, anything I missed out, leave them down in the comments below. Let me know what's up. I'll keep checking comments as days go by and I want you guys to stay well and have a blessed one. That's all I got in today's video. Till next one guys, this is Rich Me. Signing off. Ah.